everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'd like to tell you today about a trip that my husband and I took. Uh, I think it was a four-day trip. We left Tashkent and went to Bukhara, had some adventures, ended up in Samarkand, and came back from there. So I'm going to tell you a bit about our adventures. And I will also put uh, information like where we went and things we saw in the description, as well as at the end of this video. So you'll be able to look up those things. And hopefully, if you come to Uzbekistan, you will take this trip too. It was very rewarding. It was a lot of fun. Um, the only downside was it was very cold, but you know, the weather is the weather, what can you do? So we just trudged through the cold and had a pretty good time. So when we left Tashkent, we took a train to Bukhara and um, just because I felt like doing it, uh, we took a first class compartment I think the tickets were still only like $25 a piece. It wasn't really that expensive to go first class. So we had our own compartment. Um, it had a table and benches. And um, so we you know, played some card games on the table. They brought food by a couple of times. Um, it, we had to buy the food, but it still was pretty cheap. Um, and the lady who was bringing it didn't speak any English, but she was very nice and very sweet. And she was. She's trying to convince me to buy some samsas by pulling one out and putting it on my arm so I could feel how hot it was and fresh out of the you know, oven or microwave or whatever they warmed them up in on the train. Uh, so we bought four and it was only 10,000 sol, which was a little less than a dollar. So, you know, we didn't actually get around to eating all of them, but you know, we only spent like 90 cents on the four of them. So it wasn't a big loss. So once we got to Bukhara, uh, we got a taxi. There were definitely taxi drivers all standing around the parking lot yelling, taxi, taxi. So um, he didn't know where we were going, so he had to call the hotel apparently and negotiate with them how to get best to get there. Uh, the Bukhara uh, train station is not anywhere really near Bukhara. It's way out of town, so uh, expect a long taxi ride. But our uh, hotel was very nice. Uh, it was the Asalam Hotel, and I'll be mentioning that again in another video. Because when I been, went back to Bukhara a couple of weeks ago, um, I stayed at the same place. But we didn't get to see anything in Bukhara this time. We arrived in town about 9 in the evening, so by the time we got to our hotel, it was close to 10. And then we had to meet our guide to leave Bukhara at 9 the next morning. So we just had time to basically sleep and get up and go on our adventure. So we met our guide, Olim. He was at the hotel at around 9 to pick us up. And um, I'll put a picture here of Olim driving us out of Bukhara. So the first thing we saw was the Gijavan Ceramic Workshop in Gijavan. Uh, this one was, um, they've, they've been doing this for like several generations. They have pictures of people on the wall next to some of their handiwork. So you can see the actual things that that person made themselves. Uh, this was uh, repressed under the Soviet Union, but has come back now and they have this family workshop. So that was very interesting. Uh, they showed uh, how they make glaze and how they uh, you know, put things in the oven. Uh, one of the things they do at this particular place is they separate the things going into the kiln with these little tripod things. So when you get a piece of their ceramics, if you look very closely in the glaze, there'll be sort of three marks on it on the front. So you'll be able to tell that's where the little tripod was, and it's definitely one of their pieces that came out of their kiln. And then we went to see a cistern, uh, which is where people who are traveling across the desert could get water for their animals and for themselves. And we moved on to one of the highlights of the trip, which was uh, Sarma Shoti Gorge. Uh, this is where there are petroglyphs. Some of them are somewhere between 10 or 15,000 years old. 
and they've been uh, making petroglyphs there, various groups of people since since then, up to just a few hundred years ago. Apparently some of them are, are medieval in date. So thousands of years worth of history recorded on these petroglyphs. Again, uh, it's out of the way, but worth seeing. So if you can uh, go there, definitely do that. That is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and uh, it's really pretty cool. To where we were staying the first night was at a yurt camp. Um, I'm pretty sure this place is really busy in the summer. Um, they only had three yurts up at the time we were there, but one of the storage areas um, they had there on the property, you could see where the other yurts had been taken apart and various pieces were in storage. So I'm sure somewhere about now that the weather's getting better, they're pulling those out and putting a lot more yurts up, expecting a lot more visitors when the weather is good. When we were there, it was very cold. Uh, I had on um, long underwear, two pairs of socks, I think four t-shirts, a sweater, two coats, a um, hood, scarf, uh, pretty much I had all my clothing on me and it was still cold, but um, it was still really, really cool. So we uh, had dinner there. This dinner was very good. This is lunch the next day was also very good. Um, there were cats that Todd made friends with as he always makes friends with cats. And uh, what really turned out to be the highlight of the trip, uh, and probably maybe one of the highlights of my whole stay here in Uzbekistan, is what happened after dinner. And there was a local singer who came by with his little two-string instrument. I forgot what he called it. Uh, and he, he sang, um, maybe for 20 minutes or so. Not difficult to imagine being some nomad, you know, when it's dark and it's cold and you're around your campfire and somebody pulls out a simple instrument and starts singing all the songs that everybody knows. And um, it was just really, really cool. <clears throat> So that was really, really one of the highlights and one of the reasons I definitely would um, suggest taking this particular tour so we would get to hear the singer. That was really, really great. Uh, so we stayed overnight in the yurt. There was a space heater. It was not terribly effective, but I'm sure it was better than nothing.
got up the next morning, we um, went to the shore of Lake Eidercall when the weather is very good. Apparently, um, people bring their swimming suits and they'll splash around in the lake for a while or, you know, hike along the shore. Uh, we were there. It was very, very windy and very, very cold. So we just sort of stood around a little bit, uh, saw some uh, birds, I believe a, a harrier we saw and uh, several other larger birds. Um, but we quickly got back in the park and uh, went back to camp. brought out a Bactrian camel and uh, we took a camel ride so that was also very cool um, I'll put in some pictures here of my husband on the camel uh, it was just it was a very short ride but it was I'm very cold still but really neat At that time we had lunch and then it was time to go.
And from the yurt camp, we went to some place in the mountains. I could not find it again. Uh, there's just no way, but uh, Oli knew the way. He took it to this place where the family runs a small guest house. Uh, I'm sure it's for supplemental income for their farm. They do have a few cows, a bunch of chickens, some sheep and some goats. But uh, the next day it started to warm up a bit. So the sun came out a little bit. And um, so Todd went off and took a hike with the brother-in-law of the lady who runs it. Her name is Nagina. And uh, Nagina um, invited me to help her make the plov. So we're gonna have plov for lunch. I, that is the national dish. And I've, I mentioned it in other videos. Uh, it's basically something you throw in a pot and you leave for several hours. Um, and I assume that's kind of a throwback to the old nomadic days for who had time to just watch the pot all day. So you throw the things in the pot and you walk off and then, you know, watch the kids, handle the animals, do whatever else needs to be done in your nomad camp. And then a few hours later, you can go back and just start ladling out this stew. Uh, so I helped her chop the vegetables and um, then it was invited into her house where I helped a bit with the, uh, the bread. I had helped, uh, she and her sister-in-law were uh, putting it, making it into balls and then they let it rest for a while. And then I helped them um, kind of pound them out into the right shape. Well, that was basically the end of our adventure. We piled in the car with Aline and he drove us to Samarkand, which is about four hours from uh, Nagina's place. So our, the rest of our trip, I'm sure I've covered in the Samarkand uh, videos, so I won't repeat all that stuff here. Definitely Samarkand is interesting to see too, but if you could take this trip, which I assume a lot of people don't even know about and probably don't take, because um, it does take you out into the farther parts of the country and really leaving the cities behind. So um, it may not be something people think about doing. Um, I will say the, the the picture that I put up behind me, this is one of the details of the yurt we stayed in. Uh, that was some of the uh, fabric that was wrapped around the exterior of it. So if you want to stay in a yurt, uh, if you want to swim in a lake or ride a camel or meet people like the people at the yurt camp or listen to the singer or meet Nagina and her family, definitely this is something that you should do. Um, the only downside really was that the driver, um, our guide, only didn't really speak any English and I don't speak very much Russian. So um, we did a lot of other pantomime and things that I would have liked to be able to speak with him more and find out you know, about his family or how long he's been doing this and what he likes about the job or whatever. But you know, quite literally, we couldn't actually converse with him. So that, that was kind of a downside. I would like to know more about Olim. But um, besides that, everything was really great, and I would certainly recommend this trip. So if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll be putting more up later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.